This tutorial will show how to use SAP 2000's powerful interactive database editing command to modify model data in a tabular form, a strong complement to the graphical approach. Start by going to the Edit Interactive Database Editing command. And note that the form shows two tabs, Definitions and Assignments, analogous to the Define and Assign menus on the main menu bar. Under the Definitions tab, there are items such as Structure and Geometry data, Properties, Loads, and Analysis cases. Under the Assignments tab, we find the various object assigns, such as Joint, Frame, Area, and Solid. For this example, select Joint Coordinates and Frame Connectivity, along with Material Properties. Click OK. And note that on the next form, the drop-down menu offers the three categories of tables that we just selected, namely connectivity, joint coordinates, and the various material properties that have been defined. Click on the connectivity option, and then select row 1 or frame object 1. And note that the selected member is highlighted on the model with a blinking line. Click on the General Materials table and select the last row. Click the Copy button and then the Paste Append button, duplicating the previous row, which makes for easy and rapid generation of similar properties. Next, click on Joint Coordinates. Again, if we select the first row or Joint Object 1, Note that the joint location is highlighted on the model by the blinking dot. A right click anywhere in the table will bring up a drop down context sensitive menu. For the coordinate type column, note that the calculator option is not available, as this is not a numeric input variable, but that the drop down list is, which lists the available values for this variable based on previously defined input. A right click in the X location column shows that the drop down menu has the calculator option available because it is looking for numeric input. And if we click on it, the calculator form appears. In this form, we can type in detailed formulas and the program will calculate the value and then place it in the table. A click on the unit button causes the units menu to appear, and a change from inches to feet causes the column underneath to be instantly updated. We can also send this table out to Excel by using the To Excel button. Make changes to the data in the spreadsheet. And without closing that spreadsheet, re-import the changes back to the SAP 2000 table. Note that no changes made to the tables are applied to the model until the Apply to Model button is clicked. As a general rule, Labels, such as the frame object IDs, should not be altered on the tables, as it will change the label for that table only, and references in other tables will not be updated. A better way to change labels is go to the Edit Change Labels command, as this will change the names as well as update all references to the name. If we go to the File Export command, we see that there is an option to send out to an Excel spreadsheet. This differs from the export previously done with the editing tables in that it sends out the entire model and not just a single table. Next, we will show how the Interactive Database Editing command can make quick work of modifying applied loads. Start by selecting all the joints on the right side of our four-story frame and go to the Assign Joint Loads Forces command 
enter a lateral load of 10 kips in the negative x direction. However, very often lateral loads are applied in a more triangular distribution, such as to represent earthquake forces. To modify these loads, go to the Interactive Database Editing command and select the Assignments tab. Check the Joint Force Loads box. and click OK. Click in the F1 column for joint 9. Modify the load by multiplying the 10 kips by the fraction 4 fifths. Follow the same procedure for joint 8 and joint 7, but using fractions of 3 fifths and 2 fifths, respectively. Apply these changes to the model by clicking on the Apply to Model button and note how the applied loads have changed. This was considerably quicker and easier than selecting each individual joint object and assigning the appropriate values. This concludes this tutorial.